So, I'm Shivam Mehta, Senior Product Manager for MWA. My name is Umar Ramadas. I'm a Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. All right. Well, what's the motivation for this session? Imagine that you are buying a product at Amazon, and one of the things we all do is go through reviews. How many of you read negative reviews ahead of positive reviews, given you have both? OK. I usually read negative reviews. It's kind of a cognitive bias. Our brain thinks negative news, negative information, have more information value and complex to process than positive news. So then we tend to make decisions based on the negative information. In the information world today, there are so many articles and blogs people have access to about airflow challenges. So today in this talk, we're going to go over some of the top critical feedbacks we hear from users and also from the internet and why the users think that it is a challenge. Is it a myth or a truth? We're going to dissect that. We're also going to share some of the opportunities that Airflow can you know, use as a product. And finally, we'll share you some of the resources that you can rely on to know more about Airflow. The first critical feedback, we don't exactly hear in the same wording as Airflow is not enterprise ready, but we hear from users that we're from a highly regulated industry, we don't know how secure Airflow is. Or we hear the Airflow is not backward compatible, the newer versions break existing deployments. Our scheduler can go unhealthy anytime you run business critical applications. We cannot compromise on reliability or availability. The enterprises do not just often look for great product. They also look for capabilities related to security, compliance, scaling, resilience, and many more. So we looked into three different aspects for this critical feedback. The first thing is security. How many of you know that Airflow has a dedicated security team? Yes, they do have a dedicated security team. And they are all the one who fix security related issues and handle security related communications. They made a recently a comprehensive update to Airflow security model to clarify user capabilities and also to guide security researches. And they also have a comprehensive guidelines on how to report security issues and also handle security vulnerabilities. If you want to learn more about Airflow security policies or Airflow security model, here are the QR codes. The second thing we looked into is extensibility. With version 2 of Airflow, community brought higher availability with, with multiple schedulers. And they also brought tons of um, features to improve the stability of the product and the scalability of the product. You also know that with Airflow v2, provider packages are separated from the code library, which means customers can bring in the provider packages anytime. They can update it anytime, as long as the provider package support the core version of Airflow that you're running. It also improves the security posture because provider packages vulnerabilities are handled separately. And as soon as a fix is available, you can just update the provider package rather than updating the entire Airflow version. Public interfaces allow customers, or actually developers, to build custom components, custom operators, custom executors, even custom provider packages, among many other things. It empowers developers to add missing functionality, to expand Airflow's functionality beyond what it is about, you know, beyond what you use for DAG building. And it also promotes reusability and collaboration because you can develop custom components, share it among your organization entities, and also share publicly. To me, public interfaces is one of the very powerful features of Airflow, and I would say enterprises would definitely love it. And the third thing we looked into is adoption, how popular Airflow is. Today, there are 10 million monthly pipe downloads for Airflow. Across industry, across the globe, 
uh, based on independent research, 40 to 50 percentage of data practitioners use Airflow. We also looked into the enterprises who are using Airflow. Household names like Apple, Airbnb, Lyft, they've all publicly talked about the usage of Airflow in previous Airflow summits and also in public forums. The enterprises also look at roadmap. Healthy roadmap shows how invested the community is on the product. You can look at it in the top, um, top right in the graph. That shows the new features and improvements that were added to Airflow over time. In the last release, which is 2.7, there are cumulatively 1,600 new features and improvements added. That means there's about 310 new features and improvements added to Airflow every year, starting from 2019. Backward compatibility is a feature of Airflow. Airflow community or the project accepts only uh, the new features and the improved features in the major and the minor version of Airflow. And we also see tremendous pace of improvement in new releases and also time to close the bug. New releases are now happening every 30 days on an average, and time to close a bug is less than 10 days compared to 100 days in 2021. With that, I'm going to jump on to the next critical feedback. Airflow is for batch-oriented, time-driven, consistently running pipelines. Critics say that users are trying to build even-driven pipelines, and Airflow makes it complex to build pipelines that are dependent on each other, or pipelines that are triggered on external events. In Airflow documentation itself, in many places you can see Airflow is depicted as a batch platform, batch workflow platform. And when Airflow was started, it only supported time-based scheduling. And still, it is the primary mechanism to run pipelines. But we have a different perspective on the event-driven pipelines based on some recent features that were launched. First of all, event-driven pipelines require an event consumer. Event consumers generally are either pull, follow a pull model or a push model. A push-based model is really good, very real-time, fast, but it puts the onus of scaling on the consumer to the level of the producer, which brings tighter coupling and can also cause stability and scalability issues. Airflow does not support that, which is really good. On the other hand, Pull-based consumer model gives you control over the pace and the frequency, the way the consumer can consume events. We all have, must have, if you're using Airflow, used a pull-based consumer model. Any idea? Yeah, sensors. Sensors allow you to trigger pipelines and the occurrence an event. For example, S3 sensor allows you to trigger a pipeline when a file is uploaded to S3 bucket, Amazon S3 bucket. So, but then when you host pipelines in an Airflow environment, it's not just one pipeline, it's not just one sensor. You're gonna have co-host multiple different pipelines. So if you happen to have multiple pipelines, each of them having sensor, it is possible your sen sensors can cause some scaling challenges. However, I think the two features that were recently launched, data-driven scheduling and deferable operator has made the whole event-driven pipeline more scalable and reliable in Airflow. Data-driven scheduling allows you to trigger tasks on the availability of data. Def deferable operator or triggerers allow you to uh, pause and resume tasks on events. On the other hand, dynamic workflows allow you to run dynamic number of tasks based on runtime parameters. So speaking with some of the PMC members, I'm excited that Airflow has taken an incremental innovation approach to add more event-driven uh, event driven pipeline related features in the future of Airflow. If you want to learn more about data-driven scheduling, there is a talk by Vikram, micropipelines, a microservice approach for DAG authoring using data sets. 
If you want to learn more about deferrable operator, there is also another talk, Reducing Cost with Async Deferrable Operators by Zachary. All right, the third critical feedback, the Airflow UI is not intuitive. Typically, users compare Airflow UI with similar orchestration platforms, UI capabilities, and also general UI trends. I kind of feel Airflow V1 badly needed an update. Community is actually hearing the feedback, and we see Airflow V2 came up with modern, more functional UI. We've got grid view, we have cluster activity page. We also have Airflow logs now coming up in the Airflow UI itself for you know, easier and quicker debugging purposes. From what I spoke with users and customers, we see that Airflow V2 UI is more functional and is also more modern. And we can also see in the graph here, there's constant improvements. And we've added, community has added new and improvements over the time period. In fact, looking at it from the end of 2022 to 2023, there are many features are added to Airflow and just on the UI enhancements alone. With that, I'm going to take a back seat and pass to Shibam Mehta for the next set of critical feedbacks. So let's get into another critical feedback that we hear from customers, that we hear from critics. Airflow offers limited decentralization. Remember those old school switchboards where a person had to manually connect calls? Well, that's how Airflow started, centralized and managed by a single team. But data landscape has changed. Times have changed. Now it's all about decentralization and giving autonomy to individual data teams. But decentralizing Airflow comes with its own set of challenges. If you are running Airflow in a multi-tenant setup, the security is not there. A task can access any sensitive information from the metadata DB. Running Airflow in multi-tenant environment is like an open book, so, which is very critical for enterprise adoption. Secondly, the execution environment flexibility. Airflow today ties you to a specific executor and hampering any flexibility that tasks have. Auditing evolving workflows. It is not possible in Airflow today to look at your historical DAG states, but DAGs change over time. They are alive entities, right? And that having no ability to audit your old workflows makes it really critical for some of the enterprises. But you would think that it's all, there are a lot of gaps, but it's not all a sad story. Community, the Airflow community knows about some of these feedback and we are working on addressing these. Let's get into multi-tenancy. So there have been continuous flow of PRs in order to support multi-tenancy for Airflow. There have been three AIPs in the last one year, starting with deck processor separation and then recently extensible auth management. What you're seeing here is the number of PRs that have been contributed just to support multi-tenancy. So multi-tenancy is coming. And if you want to learn about what's happening latest and greatest with multi-tenancy, be sure to check out later today, Yerek Matosh and Vincent's talk on multi-tenancy state of the union. But Airflow community is not just stopping at multi-tenancy. There are task groups. Task groups have evolved recently from more than just a UI feature to a core Airflow construct. They are becoming the foundation of reusability and sharing your DAG code with other DAGs. Then DAG versioning. There, have, there was a proposal introduced by Cuxil, I think about a year or two years ago, and community is, there are discussions going on to ramp up that proposal and bring it forward so that we can make DAG versioning a reality. Lastly, hybrid executors. Community is working on adding more cloud native executors so that you can customize the, the executors that each task have. And if you want to learn, Nico talked about a lot in, in detail in his talk around executors, about hybrid executors. So if you missed his talk, be sure to check it out online later on YouTube. The talk was Airflow executors past, present and future. Let's get into another critical feedback that we hear. Airflow is hard to operate at a scale. Running Airflow at a scale is almost like juggling while you are balancing on a tight rope. And to some extent, Airflow has been a victim of its own success because nobody saw the growth and the use cases people will end up using Airflow for. 
Now, when running at Airflow at a scale, critics often point out complexities with configurations and the number of critical components that Airflow have. Airflow being an open source library provides you maximum flexibility, but that leaves customers with users with 350 plus configurations. To be precise, there are about 386 configurations in Air, Airflow supported today, and it gets really, really difficult to understand each of those configurations to fine tune the system. And then Airflow has five plus critical components from a scheduler, executor, web server, trigger, metadata DB, the list goes on. And it, as an organization, you need to understand how to configure each of these critical components and how to manage them. And lastly, the freedom that DAG authors have, it's a double-edged sword because you can write a poor DAG that can bring down an entire Airflow instance. It, it can consume all the resources from all other DAGs and it can slow down the scheduler itself. But again, that is not completely true and completely relevant today because things have changed in the past, in recently. So in the last few years, a lot of managed services have come out. There is a managed service from Astronomer. There is managed service from all the, there are managed services from all the top cloud providers, which make it very easy to run Airflow at a scale and manage it at scale. And if you're self-hosting Airflow, Airflow CI already has, already emits a Docker image that, that has everything back, baked in that you can use in your production to set up your production environment. And not to forget the Airflow V2 that Uma talked about, it came with a lot of reliability and high availability features that made all those core components more robust and more fault tolerant. And in terms of availability, Airflow supports features like dynamic task mapping and deferable operators that make it very easy to run thousands of tasks in parallel at scale. But we don't need to stop there. There is a lot more we can do here to improve lives of our users having contextual conflict guidance in UI as UI alerts, as well as in the documentation and the right, like mentioning those things at, on the right pages can actually go a long way. Imagine you getting a UI alert that your scheduler min process interval could is 30 seconds, but if it's higher, you can actually make your scheduler more stable. Secondly, Airflint was a great project done by Felix on, it was a POC kind of to, to, op, to help you optimize DAGs. And we can, there is an opportunity here for all of us to collaborate on an open source utility that can help you optimize your DAG code, find, find out any inefficiency in your DAG code and help you make your DAGs more efficient and more like ad adhere to best practices. Let's get into the last critical feedback that we hear from customers. Airflow is not always developer friendly. Yeah, that's a heavy one. It's like, imagine you're trying to do a deadlift without proper training. It can be hard. And Airflow developer experience, while it's Airflow has a lot of capabilities, it can be intimidating. When talking about developer experience, we, we cover how you have to author DAGs, how you have to take your DAGs to production, and then monitor your Airflow environment. And critics point out that there are gaps at each of these stages to some extent. When you are starting with authoring DAGs, it's very easy to get started. You can write your DAG in a couple of minutes because it's all Python based. But if you want to run Airflow at a scale, and if you want to write a DAG which is performant and follows best practices, you need to know a lot. Airflow's extensive set of features, deferable operators, dynamic task mapping, while make it powerful, they make it complex as well. And once you have the DAG, you would want to test it. Testing your DAGs is pretty easy today because there is Breeze that you can run locally. There is Docker image that you can run and there are local runners available from all the managed services which you can use to test your DAGs locally. But when you want to take your test, well-tested DAGs to production, again, you have to get into details of CI CD setup. You need to understand the GitHub actions that you need to configure, you need to configure your DAG storage and plugin management, which can be complex. And lastly, as when you have DAGs in production, Airflow provides you with a lot of metrics to make it very easy for, to you, for you to monitor pipelines. But having 70 plus metrics for your just pipelines, as well as besides that having infrastructure related metrics can get really overwhelming for data engineers to monitor their Airflow environment. 
but again that is not all true because there have been work done in order to address some of these issues as re re recent as version 2.7 cluster activity dashboard that was added by peer it is great for monitoring your data pipelines and again we don't need to stop there i feel like there is an opportunity to make that dash cluster activity page even more better with providing alerts like scheduler is overloaded or your total deck parsing time is very high and helping customers get the actionable insight from that page. And then DAG authoring. As we talked about, Taskflow API has made DAG authoring somewhat easy. But again, having a combined approach, a hybrid approach, which takes in the code-based access as well as UI-based access and combines them to provide a DAG authoring tool can go a long way and make DAG authoring accessible to a lot more users. As indicated by a survey that Mark Lamberti did, 40% of the users, that's a huge number, express a preference for a hybrid approach where you can combine both UI and code. And lastly, to make the CI-CD setup easier, we can work on providing pre-built pre plugins or one-click deployment recipes so that customers and users can directly use those recipes to set up their CI-CD pipeline and streamline the process. To sum it up, we talked about six critical feedback and we unpacked them. We tried to understand what is actually true and what's actually not true. There is a lot of misconception out there. And yes, with every software, there are feature gaps in Airflow, but all those feature gaps are an opportunity that we can all come together to address. Airflow has a vast community of 2,600 GitHub contributors and 34,000 Slack members with over 100,000 users. All these opportunities, all these gaps, we can easily address by working together and collaborating with each other. And Airflow is innovating at fast pace. Things are changing rapidly. A lot of new versions are coming out. So if you are a new user and just getting started with Airflow, our request to you would be not to rely on things written one year ago or two years ago. Rely on the credible sources, the source of the go to the source of information and I would recommend going over the ecosystem page of Airflow to understand what's out there and also if you are running if you run into problems with your with your Airflow do join the Slack community and you can also hang out with your fellow Airflow builders with that thank you, thank you. for listening <laughs> any questions How would developers be using? So have you tried thing like something like step functions or even Dolphin scheduler? Right now, I feel like you have to write everything. Like you have to write the DAC code and in the UI, you can't change anything. But what we are expect, what we would want to develop is you're able to move around the like dependencies within the Airflow UI. You're able to right click and change configuration that you are providing to the operator within the UI itself and that will reflect in your code as well. So having that seamless interface between code and the UI would make it very easy for people to get started. Is it available now? Or it's there was a one plugin, like one module developed, I, I think a long back that only supports Airflow 1.0. I don't think there is anything that supports Airflow 2.0 available today. And that's why like that is like I'm product manager for MWA and like we have an open source team and we are looking forward to starting a project which actually makes this UI based code access more easy. Okay. UI based DAG authoring more easy. So something we could see potentially next year. Hopefully, yeah. Like <laughs> I wouldn't put gun to my head for that, but. But if if you are if you are interested in something like that and you think it would be a great tool, I would love for us to chat about it and how we can collaborate to make that a reality. Any other questions? We did publish it during Airflow V2. So Astronomer did publish when we were moving from V1 to V2, like what were the optimization done? 
and yeah so those threads are available and with the when we are working with new executors we are also testing the scale that we can reach with some of these new executors but yeah having comprehensive set of threads and benchmark available would be helpful so it's available in some yeah it's in, it's in blog post so we're going to yeah yeah it's a very difficult challenge to address what does performance look yeah. like yeah. because you might have 10 tag that went to awesome and 10000 tag that went to not so awesome right yeah. so we have Yeah, so storage, yeah, we, like we had defined the environment, right? Like yeah. uh, this type of legs, this scenario, exactly. this number of legs runs and all of that. But like you mentioned, it de in reality, it will depend on your actual workload. But yeah, we, okay. we try to, as with any other benchmark, right? Yeah, even yeah. with an example, like if you have some stats, I'll give it. Yeah, yeah, we, like we do. We do. To like one, uh, task yeah, yeah, we do. And we were optimizing for uh, task latency, right? Yeah. Um, and that is the most important thing. If my deck is supposed to run at 12.30, it should run at 12.30 and not at 1. That is the <laughs> uh, at, at, at the risk of self-promotion, I have a talk yes. tomorrow. I was about yeah, to say you about uh, that actually covers how to save costs by reducing the performance needs for how you get off your decks and have some performance. So. And this was in Airflow Summit last year when you did virtually that session. Right? Yeah, I did a session last year at Airflow Scale and this year covering more about how, how you can optimize to save costs. That was a quick answer. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for it to uh, promote that for John, but he was in the room. I didn't want to say I, 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 I waited as long as I could before I didn't say anything. And, 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 and. <laughs> any well, other questions? Yeah. And if you guys want to like have any more questions, you can definitely catch us. Like We are here when for three days. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.